Okay, so we have been eagerly waiting to get our hands on this monitor. Ever since we went to the Alienware press conference back in December, we saw this monitor, we fell in love with it, couldn't wait to get our hands on it. So this is the Alienware AW3423DW. And what makes it special is that it's the world's first ultra wide for gaming with a QD OLED panel. Now we have been using this monitor for the past couple of weeks. We've been gaming on it, we've been editing on it. So let's dive in and talk about all the key features that it has to offer and see if it's actually worth buying. And also, by the way, this video is not sponsored by Alienware, but we did ask them to send over the monitor so that we could review it. So let's get into the video right after this quick word from today's actual sponsor, Govi. This video is brought to you by Govi and their Glide Hexa panels. If you've ever wanted to deck out your room with RGB, the Glide Hexa panels are a great place to start. You get 10 panels included in the box, which you can use to make a huge number of designs and patterns. Each panel also contains RGB IC tech, which basically means it can display several different colors simultaneously versus standard RGB, where only one color can be displayed at once. This allows for many advanced lighting effects and much smoother gradient flows between panels. They have full app control within the Govi app, so you can customize them to your exact liking, along with lots of scenes for you to try out to get inspiration for your room lighting. They have a music sync mode, so you can use them to visualize all your favorite songs. And they also support Amazon Echo and Google Assistant so you can add them to your smart home and control them with your voice. To check them out and take your game and set up to the next level, click the link in the description down below. So first off, the overall design has had a small refresh. It's familiar, but the back of the monitor has this almost two-tone look to it now, and the stand is also a bit sleeker with smoother edges. There's plenty of options when it comes to adjustability. We have a height up and a height down, turning side to side, tilt up, tilt down, and finally rotate left and right. While we're on the subject of the stand, I did notice it seems to pick up scuffs very easily. They're a bit hard to pick up on camera, but it's just something to be aware of if you wanna keep it looking in tip-top condition, which I know a lot of people will, because it's a nice stand. Now, having said that, I'm sure a lot of people will be pleased to know that the RGB lighting has been moved from the stand onto the back of the monitor itself, which I think was an awesome move. It makes more sense for people like me who wall mount their monitors since you don't end up losing that RGB lighting. They've also improved the wall mounting situation. You actually get an additional quick release plate included, which you can use specifically for attaching your wall mount to. What this basically means is that it's extremely quick to switch the stand out for a wall mount. You don't have to unscrew anything. You just press the button to release it, swap it out, lock it back in place, and you're good to go. Over on the front side of the monitor, design-wise, not much has changed, although the bezels are slightly thicker than the last model, and we have a joystick located underneath the center of the monitor, which is nice, and it's much easier to use rather than buttons from the previous model. But it does take a bit longer to get through the menus versus dedicated buttons, but overall, it's an easier and nicer experience. Now let's talk about the screen. The first thing you'll probably notice when you take it out of the box is how glossy it is compared to your matte PC screens that you're used to. It looks like it's TV screen, honestly. And even though it does have an anti-reflecting coating, you'll probably still want to make sure that you don't have any bright lights or windows behind you when you're using it. That's definitely something to consider and take into account before purchasing this monitor. It is reflective, but it does look amazing. Another thing you might notice when you're unboxing it is that it's slightly more curved than the previous model. Now this is an 1800R curve. It's not really noticeable once you're using it. You kind of just forget about it, but it's something you'll probably notice when you're setting it up. We'll go over inputs real quick before talking more about the display. So we have one DisplayPort version 1.4, two HDMI 2.0s, and I know some people are probably gonna be very disappointed it doesn't have HDMI 2.1, but it's honestly not an issue since the only time you would really need 2.1 is for the latest generation of gaming consoles and they usually don't support ultra wide resolution anyways. There's also a total of five USB ports. They're all 3.2 Gen 1. Two of them are at the front bottom along with a headphone jack. The other three are located on the rear. This is also where you'll find the line out port. In terms of cable management, you do get this cover included which hides all the ports once you've got everything plugged in for a cleaner look. I also like the fact that you can route the cables through the middle of the stand like on the previous Alienware monitors. It makes for keeping everything neat and tidy and much easier. Okay, so the display is using a Quantum Dot OLED panel from Samsung. If you're not familiar with what this is, it basically combines the strength of a QLED and an OLED display technology. On the QLED side, you've got amazing brightness. On the OLED side, you've got amazing contrast and perfect black levels. It is literally the best of both worlds and is the first time it's ever been available on a consumer ultra wide like this. Now, another benefit to the QD OLED is that there is much less risk of burn-in to the point where Dell is offering a three-year warranty as a standard on this 34 inch monitor. If you want more of a deep dive on how the tech side of QD OLED works. Digital Trends did a great video on it and I'll link it in the description and in a card on the top right. 
But in this video, I wanted to try and convey what it's like to actually use and who it's going to benefit most. If this is your first time experiencing OLED, the first thing you'll notice is the black levels. If you put this next to a regular monitor and display black levels on both of them, it makes a regular monitor look gray by comparison. Honestly, it is a huge difference. You'll wonder how you ever lived without it, especially if there's games where there's a lot of dark areas. Everything looks so much better. Now let's talk about HDR. So for a start, not all games support HDR and even fewer implement it well. Now, a few games that do have good HDR are Cyberpunk 2077, Halo Infinite, Sea of Thieves, and Forza Horizon 5. In fact, Forza Horizon 5 probably offers the best HDR experience that I have ever tried. If you've seen Linus Tech Tips first impressions of this monitor, there is a part where he mentions that your eyes almost have to adjust between looking at the sky and the ground. And he is absolutely right. I can only describe it as looking at the real sun in real life. It is so realistic and so impressive. It's something you really have to see for yourself. And part of why it works so well is the monitor's peak brightness of 1000 nits in HDR 1000 mode, which is insanely bright. And by the way, there's also a standard HDR 400 true black mode that you can toggle in between in the settings. Now, obviously it's never going to be 1000 nits across the entire panel while you're gaming. But with all that extra headroom means that when an image calls for it, there's a crazy amount of dynamic range. You'll notice it, especially in games like Cyberpunk, where there's a lot of gunfire and explosions. The flashes are extremely bright. Another nice thing about this monitor is that it also has G-Sync Ultimate, which basically means you can use G-Sync and HDR at the same time. It's nice to be able to use them both together and not feel like you're missing out. Something else to talk about is the viewing angles. Now, many monitors I've used in the past don't really have that great of viewing angles. Colors shift and get washed out as soon as you're not directly in front of the panel. Now, with this monitor, you don't really have that problem because it's pretty much the same from any angle. So you get a consistent experience from wherever you're looking from. Although I'm sure like most people, you sit in front of your monitor and you're not on the other side of the room. Saying that though, I can't wait to see QD OLED tech come to TV is that's where I think it will be able to shine, especially when it comes to viewing angles. So who is this monitor for? Let's start off with gamers. If you are purely a competitive FPS player, this monitor probably is not for you. Even though it does have a high refresh rate of 175 Hertz, which is an improvement over the previous model at 120 and definitely isn't going to be a bottleneck at this resolution, it is nowhere near as fast as some of the monitors on the market now. We're seeing 360 hertz monitors become widely available, and if you are a competitive gamer, you probably are better off buying one of those. Higher frames is always gonna win you more games than having, for an example, perfect black levels. Although I will mention this monitor has extremely low input lag, and there's also virtually no motion blur, or at least little enough to a point where I didn't even notice. But I feel like the real priority of this monitor is an impressive gaming experience. Those who are looking for the absolute best in image quality and no, it's not a 4K resolution panel, but the actual quality of the image is stunning. If you're the type of person that loves to play open world games and be immersed in the environment, this monitor will blow you away. It is an absolute joy to game on. Now, what about content creators? Because one of the most important things when it comes to content creators is color accuracy and performance. And for a gaming monitor, it is really impressive. It does have a specific creator mode setting in the OSD and it manages 100% sRGB, 97% Adobe RGB, and 95% DCI P3 coverage, which is actually better color saturation than even a lot of the professional displays aimed at creators. So like I said, for a gaming monitor, it is impressive to say the least. Now I can't speak personally for color accuracy because we don't currently have the equipment required for testing it ourselves, although it is something we're looking to get into for future reviews. But from what I've seen from other people's testings, it is above average or at least better than other gaming displays in this price range. I've seen some contrasting numbers of Delta E's between two and over five, so I can't really give you a solid answer. I don't know what the tolerance are from the factory on these kinds of panels, and like I said, I haven't tested it myself. But I will say that it's more than adequate for full-time content creators. Me and Josh have been editing our videos on this thing, so to have these kind of numbers on a gaming monitor is really nice and something that many creators with no doubt will definitely appreciate. Especially because it means you can have just one monitor for everything. Being able to go straight from working on content as a video or photo editor to a full-fledged gaming session on the same monitor is awesome. Let's briefly talk about price. So it's $12.99, which honestly is a lot less than what I was expecting. 
I was expecting this monitor to be like $2,000 with the fact that it uses the latest display technology along with all the features it offers. And as regards to alternatives and competitors at this price point, as of right now, there really aren't any. And if you're looking for a new monitor that you want something that's going to make a noticeable difference to your gaming experience, this monitor ticks all the boxes with nearly no compromises at a price that isn't much higher than many other 34 inch ultra wides. So what do you guys think? Will you be picking up one of these monitors for yourself? Let us know down in the comments below. I'm really hoping this QD OLED tech comes to more monitors soon, which I'm sure it will, and also TVs. That would be awesome. Now, if you guys want to check out this monitor, we'll make sure to have have all the links down below in the description. And if you enjoyed the video, a like rating would be much appreciated. Now, if you're not a subscriber to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and join our community. We would love to have you here. And if you wanna follow us on our socials, you can find Josh here and mine here. And until next time, guys, we'll catch you in the next video.